so the parkland in a box. Okay, so we draw, really there's a y-axis and an x-axis. Here's x right there. Y-axis we call psi. And just to make it look like a box, we do that. But that has no meaning other than it looks more like a box. Okay, so let's do an easier looking one. Before I even pick one, we'll just go 0 and L. Okay, so that's the template for drawing the graph. Uh, we'll do an easier one. We'll do uh, n equals 3. That means, so a couple things you'll want to note immediately. The number of nodes is n minus 1, or 3 minus 1, or 2. Yeah. And then uh, L is, uh, let's see, n. Well, you got Excellent. Thank you. So that's 3 lambda over 2. So, uh, let's see how this looks. The way I do this, I draw the nodes first. There's two equally distributed. And then you always start up. Then you go through the node, go down. Through the next node, go up. And then end at the other side of the box. There's the wave function. Uh, the wave function, and this formula I'll give you on the test, you'll need to just plug in for n. In this case, n equals 3 is the square root of 2 over L sine of 3 pi x over L. So the only thing you would need to do from the test is put the number 3 right here oh, and the number 3 right here, and that's it. It would be n's on the test. Okay, but this specifically uh, graphs this function. Okay, there's psi. That's kind of, so far that's it. We, we'll get to the probability. First, let's write out the nodes. Nodes, so of course, it's 0 and L. There's external nodes, but we are more interested in what's called internal nodes. You can see how this divides the wave function, divides the box into three parts, these two nodes. So it, this is a third of the way out, this is two thirds of the way out, and there's a full one. So what I do is I just say, well, L over 3, for the first node, and then the second one's 2L over 3. So I do it more by inspection, that's my style. You don't have to do it that way. You could, uh, I guess, kind of come up with a little formula that takes this number 3 and divides it evenly, so it would be 1 third, 2 thirds, and in this case. Yeah. When do you divide it in that like half? Like where the node first node is, you go like half. Like. Well, half is right here. Oh, I see. And today in class, <coughs> n was an even number. So there's a, something right in the middle. Here it's an odd number. So I kind of <coughs> if if by inspection doesn't work, you could say, well, three, so inverse that. One third is going to be the first node, two thirds is going to be the okay. second node. In class today, we did n equals four. So you go one fourth, or l over four is the first node, two over four, or l over two, mm -hmm. second node, three over four, or three l over four is the third node. Yeah, because you went like halfway between that high point right there, too. Exactly. I went in class today, I went halfway because n was an even number. So there was a node right in the middle. In this case, there's not. So it's a little, a little different. I kind of look in the middle. If there's a node there, I know it's L over 2. If there's not one, then i got to divide it up evenly by inspection. Yeah? Um, for the psi formula and the nodes, the internal ones too, I guess, you, yeah. do you never have to plug in N, like L, I mean, the one you find? You don't have to. Uh, usually, we don't give you L. But if we did, you could plug it in and find the actual value. Well, but even if it's not given, like we found it this time, right? Oh, this? Oh. No, like underneath the, to the upright. Oh, yes. This. Yeah, do we never uh, have to actually plug that in to the... Oh, this, you, no, I wouldn't plug it in because this is a function of the wavelength, this L. This L is, and it's the same L. This represents the length of the box, a meter, a 
foot, whatever. But this is a function of another unknown variable. So you oh, could okay. plug it in, but it doesn't get you anywhere in terms of a numerical solution. Okay. So usually what you do, you just write this out in terms of lambda, and you just leave this in terms of L. It's the most common. You could put lambda in here, but it doesn't get you anywhere. Okay. Uh, another thing you could do to find the nodes, by the way, you just set this equal to zero, and if you're good at trig, this is what would come out. So that's another option. We're basically setting uh, this thing equal to zero to find this, but I think the easiest way for most people is just look here. It looks, uh, looks like it's divided into three parts. How about one third, two thirds, etc. Okay. Okay, let's try a harder one. That's okay. We'll go uh, L equal. We'll go crazy. Oh. One part I didn't do, I didn't do the psi squared. Psi squared, that's the probability. So let's try that first before we do a harder one. So, psi squared, you can write it out if you want. It's just this squared, 2 over L, sine squared of 3 pi x over L. That's the function. To draw it out, you could draw that function if you're good with trig, but I think the easiest way again is to go 0 and L, draw the two nodes back in, and then start at the 0, and now you only go up, because this, a negative squared is a positive, a positive squared is a positive, so you only go up now. So you kind of draw the wave function again, but always going up. Oh, that's why we do two different that's why there's two different graphs, yeah, exactly. Because this is psi squared. This is the probability density. Is that okay? Yeah. This is the wave function. Wave function, probability density. Probability density means how probable am I at finding an electron. And uh, this is probability on this axis here, so the higher up, the higher the probability. Down here is zero, so zero probability going up. Do you see the nodes that we found before, same nodes, L over 3 and 2L over 3? Those have a zero probability. There's no electron there. These peaks here, I'll put a little star on them. They should be equal height if you draw appropriately. Those have the highest probability at those points, they'll find them. How do you determine how narrow or how like, wide the peaks are? Or is there no determination? Oh, how narrow or wide these are? Yeah. Just what makes it look the prettiest between okay. here, so it kind of goes up. You could have drawn it higher. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I would have marked you off and make them look approximately the same height. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. So these points here, these are going to be where the highest probability of my electron is. That's what I was talking about. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's only when it's squared then, when you're solving for lambda squared. So really, the only reason, yeah, to find these points are when you go to lambda squared. Okay, yeah, that's nice. Okay, so let's try that now. I know this is L over 3, and I know this is 2L over 3. So this point right here, this is half of L over 3, L over 6. This point here, if you're not good with math, you could write this out. L over 3 plus 2L over 3 divided by 2. It's the average of these two. Or if you're decent with math, you can just say it's L over 2. It's halfway. If you just look at it, you can kind of tell it's halfway there. This one here is between L and 2L over 3. So if you average those two numbers. Or if you're decent with math, you're going up by a 6 each time. So this is 5L over 3. Is that one okay? We'll do a harder one now. Sound good?